The deadline for families to opt in for blended learning has passed. However, if the city's positivity rate reaches over 3 percent, there is a chance that schools would close down. All students would go remote learning. Here to discuss more about that is New York City Council Member Mark Traeger. He is the chair of the Education Committee. Good morning to you, sir. How are you doing? Good morning, Dan. Great to be with you. So the deadline to opt in for blended learning is over and it came and went. What do we know about the numbers? Do we have any kind of data that we can understand what parents are thinking? So, Dan, they haven't shared the numbers uh, with me this morning yet, but I, I can tell you that I have seen enough to determine that the mayor's hybrid model plan is failing. Uh, it's failing to meet the needs of our kids. Uh, there are children, particularly young children, children with IEP, special needs, uh, children in temporary housing, where one day a week or two days a week of learning, in-person learning, is just not sufficient. Additionally, Dan, I would, I would argue we've been here before, back in March, when, this, when the system shifted to full remote, the city still created their rec center plan to provide emergency child care to the children of essential workers. Mm -hmm. And that's why I shared a plan back in July, uh, centering the needs of our most vulnerable children, young children, children with special needs, Again, the city's most vulnerable kids to provide in-person services, the option of in-person services five days a week with the option to opt out. I am told that the plan is now under a, some consideration by the city administration. What are your thoughts overall, though? Because it seemed that this was a do or die for parents, right? They had to decide and they are locked in for the rest of the school year. If cases dramatically increase or decrease, do you think or do you want to see an option for parents to be able to change their plans? So then it was outrageous for the mayor to even put this onus on parents in the middle of, of, of rising cases. You know, there's there's these alarm bells going off in the city of New York with rising, rising cases. We still don't even have data on tests in the yellow zone schools uh, in, in Brooklyn, in my district, in parts of, uh, of Queens as well. They haven't given us data. How can you put pressure on parents to make such an important decision without this information? But again, Dan, I'll go back to this. It's time to cancel the mayor's failing hybrid plan. Right. It does not meet the needs of, of, of children, and it's also failing to meet the needs of working parents. You know, and some are saying it's not a matter of, of if, but when the fact that the city will reach that 3% threshold. New York City Mayor de Blasio and the governor seem to differ on the shutting down plan. Mayor de Blasio obviously wants to go remote learning. You know this. If we reach that 3%, the governor saying, well, it should be based on positivity rates in individual schools. You're the chair of the Education Committee. You're a former teacher yourself. What are your thoughts on the difference of opinions here? So I think the mayor is trying to use this percentage number as, you know, as a means to kind of tell New Yorkers to take this very serious, as we all should take this virus very serious, but we also need to get serious. And I don't need to see uh, the mayor's press conferences to determine that his plan is not working. Uh, and Governor Cuomo and Mayor de Blasio should work together to resource our schools adequately to provide right. a and, plan and, and, based I'm sorry. No, no, and I'm sorry to interrupt you because I know certainly parents are getting frustrated, right? I'm, I'm not a parent, but I'm frustrated seeing the squabble happen and see this because parents need to understand and have a plan to move forward for their own children. Do you support a full remote learning situation at 3%? I support going, going to my plan. I support uh, providing a situation where our most vulnerable children, youngest children, elementary school, children with special needs, uh, children who are homeless, to give them the option of five days a week in person with the option to opt out while keeping our older kids uh, in, in, in remote settings and making sure that every kid has internet and devices at this time. Dan, we've been here before. Right. Back in March, we, we shifted the system to full remote, but providing emergency childcare to children of essential workers, my plan would add the, into the pool of eligibility for all of our vulnerable children, uh, not just children of essential workers. And if we did have to switch back to this 100% remote learning, you just touched upon my next question about internet and, and iPads. Are all families prepared? Do they all have the resources that they need to do this remote learning model since we are months into this now? The answer is no. The answer is no. Uh, my hearing and my subpoena revealed that close to 100,000 kids still don't have a device and, and, and internet. I am told that the administration, they're about four to six weeks away from getting devices and internet, which is unacceptable. They had six, seven, eight months to get this right. 
There is no excuse. So the answer is no, Dan. Not every child is prepared for a vote right now. And, and, and last question here, you know, and it refer, you, we'll use a Hamilton reference. Are you in the room where, when it happens? Are you in the room with the discussions with the UFT, with the mayor, since you are the chair of the Education Committee, making the decisions and hearing the thought process behind these things? I mean, up to this point, uh, they really have not consulted the city council. I mean, I am told sometimes after the fact, but I could tell you this, and I could tell you, your, your viewers this. Uh, in recent days, I've been in touch with folks in City Hall, even the Speaker of the City Council, Corey Johnson, has supported my proposal, and I'm told that my proposal is now under serious review. I shared this back in July. Mm -hmm. I thought it was based on equity in addition to safety, and I'm now told it's under review, but the mayor will make the final call. Councilman Traeger, keep us posted. Let us know, okay? You're welcome back Appreciate anytime. You, Dan. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you, you so for much. being here this morning. Stay safe to you.